Hello and welcome to our last video tutorial of machine learning pump, our machine learning pump. In this video, we are going to cover every single key concept that we learned in our machine learning course uh, with a project. It's going to be a basic project where we first create a pool of columns and then in that pool, in that pool of columns, we are going to use our concepts such as clustering, categorizing or classification, so on and so forth. But before we do that, before we jump into that, I would like to tell you that we are opened 0.4, 4.0 project GDM file and 0.4 project GH file. So let's jump into Crossroper. So in order to create our family or pool of columns, we would like to first go in and define the characteristics of each and every column. So since we are going to generate a lot of them, let's start with something simple, but also effective to give us the expression or to give us the characteristics of the column. So in order to do that, let's, let's start by pulling out a plane on XY plane and let's create our column. Why, by the way, while we are creating our columns, they are going to be twisting a bit, like they are going to be sizing in difference in terms of their heights, so and so forth. Uh, but we are going to be basically working to working on XY plane, okay, or perpendicular to XY plane. So in order to make it a bit more like mobile, Let's pull out a point and let's create a point in Grasshopper Rhino and pull this into Grasshopper so that we can create our plane within our point. We do this because we want to see our column or we may want to move our column to different views, okay? So I can turn this off, I, we can turn this off. And let's create a hexagon on this plane. So I go on to curve. Under primitive, I took the polygon. And basically what polygon asks us is the plane, starting plane, radius, segments, and if you want to fill it, which, is, which we are not going to. So in order to uh, decide on our segments, I'll go with hexagon, but you could prefer anything you want. This is our plane. And let's play, let's start with something like 35 centimeters as a starting point. Okay. And this is our starting the base point of our column. So if we imagine like let's say the height of the column is going to be four meters or 2.5 meters which we can also change let's start to like pull this or let's start to divide this into smaller steps so if you want something twisting if you want something rotating while it's going up we need to find a stationary section before we reach the end and that could be in our case uh, a section, another hexagonal section in between before we end the whole uh, column. So in order to do that, let's move this in Z direction. And let's plot the Z coordinate here. And but what we are looking at is now is basically we are looking at our columns mid stationary or let's say section is right up right above ours because the z vector is automatically adjusted with one. So how we can make this a bit like uh, uh, let's say simple but also with rules so if we say our height is going to be uh, 350 let's put 350 what we can do here 
is we can divide this into two so that we know that it's going to be in our location. Okay. But you see, it's now a bit, a bit of big. So what we can do is we can easily scale this into half of it. So let's go and let's make it, uh, let's find its midpoint. And according to its midpoint, we, are, we want to scale this geometry. We want to scale it in this center and it's now default 0 0.5 let's put it like 0 0.5 for now on but we can change it okay and we can turn this off so far so good i assume and then what we can do in order to create the twisting effect what we can we can rotate this right we can rotate this in uh, X, Y plane. So I go to transform under PDN, we have rotate. I put it out. I put the rotate in. It asks me geometry, angle, but in radians and plane. Our plane is going to be the same. Okay. Our plane is going to be the same. And in radians, change it. And let's say we want to turn it in 20 degrees. Okay, so as you can see, it's changing. But 20 is just okay for now. And what if we want to have this? And what if we want to rotate this thing? Are not rotate but we want to have another one right over here which is also turning okay so we what we are going to do is we are going to go into we are going to take this or we are we can take this let's 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 do this we are going to take this and say okay this is our midsection and right mid section and we'll be doing something similar for the top section as well okay for top section what we are going to do we we can all like let's let's go through them all again we we move this we want to move this one in Z direction, but this time 150, uh, 350, okay? And we want to, again, scale that. We go to, we take a scale. We can have it here as well. We can scale this by its midpoint. But this time, let's make it like 1.1 so that we can increase if you want to increase it, okay? And turn this off. And let's rotate this. Okay, let's rotate this by multiplying the angle that we had for our top. Our, our, sorry, our mid section. So how are we gonna do this? I go on the and I take rotate. I'm going to rotate this geometry. I'll put out the radian because it's going to the radian component takes the takes your numeric value in degrees and convert it into radians. We'll be using this plane as our plane. And then what we are going to do is will be putting out the number. So we can do it in two ways. We could use multiplication. We can come in here, we take this number and we can pull it into 20, okay? And now what we are seeing is we see it turns into, oops, sorry, we, we are going to use this not 20, not 20 for two. 
and we have 40 now as our rotation degree. So basically this is our characteristic for column formations. Okay, so we can turn this point off. We can turn our point on. As you see, when we pull this, it goes, it follows our point. So how we are going to create a column with this? We go on the surface, in surface, we are looking at loft. But before we loft this, we want to, we need to give it, or we need to operate loft function in an order. In order to do that, I go to merge. I take my first polygon, second polygon, and third slope is open. I open my third one, and then we don't, since we don't use this, we can turn this off. As you see now, it's twisting, but as you see, the degree is not that, uh, let, let me say dramatic. So when we say this, like let's say 60, you see it starts really, really turning. I mean, this is important for us because this is basically creating our characteristics. And we could do something like we could make this bigger, we could make this bigger, make it smaller. It's, it depends on us and it depends on how we are, how we want to do these things, okay? So let's say we are happy with this result, okay? And please, 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 let's take this and let's say, let's group this and say, section and we can have this and say group this and bottom section so basically what we do here is the creating the char characteristics of our column family so since we are happy with these results these numbers are going to be important for us, but let's take all this and create another group. And let's right click and say, characteristics. And we can change the color of this. Okay. However we want it. So, but what we are, the, if you go back to our aim in the project, our aim is to create a bunch of columns, right? A lot of columns with different, of course, heights, sizes, so on and so forth. In order to do that, what we are going to do is basically we'll be using the same actually strategy, but in that strategy, we'll be, make, we'll be making some sim small changes, okay? Instead of having these like, certain numbers will be giving some sort of domains or ranges and within those ranges will combine these numeric information randomly so that we'll see the results okay so let's let's do that how we can do this so we can go with the same strategy or we could change it but let's go with this one so that you can see the also differences when you take a look uh, when you're done with this definition or with this project. So uh, the first step, what we are going to do is basically we are creating a polygon, right? So I do the same thing. I create an XY plane and within that XY plane, I create a polygon. And it's one thing that we are pretty sure the polygon is going to have six segments. In my case, in your case, as I said, it could be different. So. The first thing that we need to define is our radiuses. As you see, we start, we, we do here like 35. What we can do here, we can pull a range. And in that range, our radiuses ready can change. So how we do that? We go to set, under sequence, we have random. Okay, in that random, what we are having is range. And as you see, it's zero to one. So if I double click and if I double slash, I can type some numeric values such as 20 to 45. And this is 
this is a domain okay and i can do this like for 15 to 45 it really up to it really up to you it's up to you however you want to number number is a bit important because the, the number numeric value that you're going to supply here is going to be actually number of columns we will have at the end so for this let's say 60 right now and let's group this immediately because this is going to be our column number okay so we'll be using the same number for a bunch of other operations okay so this is our column number and we have it and see see this is the value that changes and shuffles let me say the value so you can see it here so you see in the first point first info we have 38 something and when we play with the seed it changes itself immediately so what we do here is when we connect these values to our radiuses what we're seeing is we, we, we create a lot a lot of like starting sections like bottom sections right we have a lot of bottom sections right now and this is changing all those sections as you can see so let's 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 group this okay let's group this as our bottom sections because from this point on we'll be doing our operations okay so let's right click right click and say bottom sections okay so the, the second step what we've done is we we, we we define the height of these things by selecting and like we define first the height and then their scale and then their rotation value so like let's again take another move component here we are going to move this polygons in z direction as you see with this one we pull what like between we we we, we have a number let, like let's say 175 like for this one what we can do is we can we can play with this as well so i pull out another random component and again how many i want to have is how many like 60 this is crucial and between let's say this time uh double slash 100 to maybe 250 okay i mean you can always change this you can you can have it like 150 to 250 or 300 it's really, it's really up it's really up to you and see it as you remember it's changing the number so when i pull this here what i'll be seeing is you see it starts my columns are started to move in their mid sections okay and this is the first thing the second thing that i'm going to do for these things and let's okay let's pull a seed here so that we can change and this time let's group this only this one okay group this and say mid height adjust okay. and what we can do here is we can basically following the same procedure so now let's use our what let's use our uh, scaling tool okay let's use our scaling tool so we are going to take scale where we are going to scale them is their midpoints and in area we take the every single of those midpoints preview them off geometries are this and what we are seeing automatically it scales them with 0 0.5 0 0.5 could be problematic here because i mean since we are working with 
uh, a 15 I mean we, we there, there are two ways we could e increase this number like 0 0.8 something like that so that we can see if them a bit big okay a bit bigger for the mid uh, or you can change it or you can do the box it doesn't matter really actually it really up it's up to you however you want to do it and let's let's do the rotation after we've done this and we can preview this off why we don't use any random here because we are basically using the same randomness here we are just playing with it we are just dividing it right now so we come over transform and rotate we'll be using another and this is the geometry that we want to rotate and this is the plane that we want to rotate our geometries and we are going to use another random function here because it, it's it's a bit important for us as you can see uh, and we don't we haven't used any sorts of uh, variable to decide on the rotation angle so and we, the top one we used like 60 60 is oh, 60 seems okay so maybe we could exaggerate it a bit so for instance 42 75 could be or 32 75 if it's too much then we decide we, we diminish the number and again we'll take 60 because this is important for us and we pull another seat here okay and then we are going to group this and say mid angle adjustment and we use these as our uh, before we do that we have to have radians sorry we pull the radians i put i select radian i select group i add radians to our group as well so now they're rotating so basically i'm almost done with my mid part okay and what i am going to do next is to have these and group them again group them and right click to them say okay mid sections this time and right click color and let's make it something bluish okay so now what we are going to do is we are going to define our top sections okay somewhere up over here maybe and how we are going to do them we are going to do the same things actually we are going to move our starting polygon in z direction but this time what we are going to do we are going to use the same number that we have here and we just multiply it by two so instead of mid we can say height adjustments and instead of mid here we can say angle adjustments and we can select this and select this and then say we can say ungroup or i mean any or or like let's have him like that okay so so i'll be having this i'll be multiplying it by two and you see now i have every single geometry in their like doubled version okay so far so good i assume so we've finished out our first column no first step and then we are going to scale them scaling them and scaling is where something we can be a bit more flexible according to these points this geometry is going to be scaled and let's say 1.2 or 1.1 it, it really depends on what you want to reach at the end this is our scale geometry and our, we are going to rotate it 
we want to rotate this geometry from this point with radians for sure and what we are going to get is the multiplication of this value with 2 okay and we had that so you are seeing probably a lot of different things right now okay so this is our let me group this top section and let me ungroup this I'm sorry let me ungroup this okay it's not being ungrouped I don't know why so I mean, we could do that yeah let's 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 leave the, this group it doesn't really help us so we group this top section mid section and we have our bottom section as well so if we loft them let's see what will happen so basically we are going to loft them to create the surfaces but let's do the same operation what we've done is we've merged them let's take a merge our first sections sorry first sections second sections and third sections and what we what what, what would happen if we say loft you see it tries to loft almost every single geometry that it saw without using any kind of sorting operation but as you remember we supply the data according to their location so bottom is under mid is in the mid top is in the top so but still since the every single curve is being stored under the same branch under the same list it it tries to loft every single of them so for now in order to make computer calculate it a bit faster so let's disable this if we right click and if we graph these all you may see now every single list has three different curves and when we have this and when we preview this when we enable this you see now we are looking at a lot of different columns okay a lot of so we could also cap these okay so at the end we have 60 different columns which is basically which we used on these right look at these characteristics as well like as i said i mean you can if you want to change for instance angle if you increase this you see it starts to buckle up but you see now they're a bit under not under control so in further steps what we are going to do is we are going to group them we are going to cluster them according to their similar uh, points their similarities we are going to use machine learning techniques clustering method by using this but before we jump into that clustering strategy we, 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 we could we could see what we reached out here okay we could easily orient these geometries onto a grid so i go on the vector i pull out a grid let's have a square grid okay and let's see how many points it has now it has five like how many sizes one centimeter we have 36 points okay let's have like six here and ten here and let's increase the size something really big so that we can map oops, sorry we can map them into the midpoint so maybe a bit bigger okay so let's pull this up this is our basically uh, 
try out or let's say warm up exercise. So what we are going to do is we are going to map these things without using any sort of uh, sophistication. We just map them onto this grid. So how are we gonna do this? We are going to take orient and we are going to orient these geometries by their midpoints. And uh, let's flatten this onto the center of each and every cell here, okay? And we are going to flatten this as well. So we check one more time, 60 points, 60 geometries, and we pull them off here. Let's turn them off, let's turn them off, let's turn them off, off, and off. Let's turn them off. So what we have here is, I guess, somewhere we have some midpoints. I think yes, these are, so let's turn them off as well. So you see now we are having all these different columns, but as you see, they're just here uh, without any kind of sophistication or any some kind of, uh, let me say, they are just here randomly, okay? We are going to teach by looking at their own attributes, we are going to tell computer to group them by their similarities. But this is a good chance for us, okay, to, to change the geometries. Maybe, maybe the height is too much. So maybe you want to have a maximum of 2.50, okay, in your case. Maybe this these, these makes it super small, or maybe this angle is too much right now, or too little for you, or, yeah, this is better. Maybe this angle, or this, oh, oops, it's a bit big right now. So what we are going to do is basically, we like, we are scaling it so it's basically bigger than the start, starting point. So, I mean, the, all these variables that you are, that you can change. Let's turn this off. And remember, our aim is to use their attributes so that use their, find out their similarities so that we can create something as such. We see it here, but uh, in order to proceed with that video, uh, please contact us about uh, learning more about our bundles and contact us for special prices. And that's all for this video. And up until now, you could find the definition link in below. So see you in the next and continuing videos.